you, you take it out to the people and, and at the same time you kill the domination of just the advertising world that you see with all of the billboards around town. Everybody can enjoy it, you know, hundreds and thousands of people, you know, over, over the course of a year can see my art. It's just out there. You, you don't have to go to a gallery. So it's kind of a different, it's, it's like art for the masses. There's, when you put stuff out there, it's so raw and pure uh, that there's just nothing as great as that. To, to be able to put your stuff in a place where people are going to see it and then think about it and talk about it. It's complete freedom. I can paint anything. It, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just pure self-expression. Hi, my name is Luis Angulo. I'm an artist in Austin, Texas. I'm from Caracas, Venezuela, and I've been in Austin for eight years. Hello, my name is Federico Archuleta. I am a graffiti stencil artist here in Austin, Texas. For the past 12, 13 years, I've been at it. My name is Sevi Garza, and uh, I'm from here in Austin, Texas and I do street art and stencil art. So before street art, I focus mostly on canvas uh, types of paintings uh, or works done in a more traditional way, the type of paintings that you exhibit in galleries. I switched over to street art because um, the, the ability to work on a large scale uh, was really attractive to me. It, it gives you freedom. It, that you just can't find in, in, in any other formats. Also, the fact that it's out there for the world to see at any given time is also really exciting for me. I took a little bit of college to for commercial art, so I figured I would be doing my art more so in the advertising world. And uh, it wasn't until I moved here to Austin that I started to work at Tower Records here in town, which is a national record chain that has since gone bankrupt. And in front of the university here at UT, they had their store, and I did large scale stencils of different musical artists, both Texas and not and whatnot. And once I started to get feedback from that, I thought, hey, you know what, this is something that I kind of enjoy. Um, I never did any kind of freehand graffiti with a, with a cryptic graffiti writing that you see that's very popular. I started to hang out with a lot more artsy kids and I was in the business school and I started to hate my major more and more and the more conflicted I got about my major uh, the more I wanted to be doing artwork and eventually actually I ended up finishing my business major which was one of the smarter decisions I ever did I think but I started taking art classes a little bit but mainly I just started experimenting with different things so I think I started doing street art because so I was always kind of not a rule breaker and then, um, I don't know, I just had a, an urge to kind of break the rules and I wanted to do it and the rush was awesome. But uh, at the same time, I also wanted to like, I love telling stories. And one of the most genuine ways to tell a story is through street art because there's no agenda behind it except for what you want to talk about. my Latino roots and my Mexican upbringing. It's something that I like to bring to the world and I always try to, through my artwork, is come up with a new 
a new facet of, of Mexican pop culture that hasn't been seen before. Uh, you know, like now everybody knows about Luchador and Lucha Wrestling and now Dia de los Muertos. So I always try to bring in something new to the mix. And lately it has been this man, Vicente Fernandez. You say you've never heard Vicente Fernandez? That's okay, there's always a first time for everyone. See, which one would be a good one for you? How about... Ah, yes. Mujeres Divinas. started doing El Chavo on the east side of Austin because the east side is a predominantly Mexican neighborhood that's now being gentrified. And El Chavo is a Mexican TV character uh, from the 80s. Uh, it's a comedic show and uh, El Chavo in particular is a character who is an orphan that lives in a barrel. So uh, I've been placing El Chavo wheat paste all over the east side. Um, in order to bring some of that culture back, a, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of that Hispanic flavor back to the neighborhood. Uh, it was just this guy who'd been playing in the Jardin for a long time and has been a mariachi in San Miguel all his life. And so I just loved the way he looked. He was not, he was like, you could tell he had wisdom, but he also had like lots of energy and had like awesome gusto when he played and sang. And so I took him aside after our photo shoot I was like, well, could I do like a, a picture of you and then paint it? And it was kind of at the time uh, when Donald Trump started talking about Mexicans. Ugh. And uh, I wanted to do something that kind of represented my heritage. And so I painted the mariachi um, as the foreground. And then as the background, I did the American flag, but with the Mexican flag colors as the colors of the flag, um, just to kind of represent the fact that like, Pretty much all of us, except for Native Americans, are immigrants at one point in time. So all this, all the political bullshit that people worry about aside, um, that was really what I wanted to accomplish with it. And I think the piece came out really, really well. So recently I did a, a piece at Castle Hill. It was uh, during South by Southwest, part of an event called Recreate. So for my piece, I chose to paint the tardigrade. The tardigrade is a microscopic organism. It can be found all over the world, and it's the most resilient living thing uh, that we know of. And for me, the idea is to be more like the tardigrade, that no matter what life throws at you, you just keep going. Because life, as I've learned recently, um, can sometimes be really good. Sometimes it can be really, really bad, really or really shitty. Um, so uh, the tardigrade has become a symbol of j just keep, keep trucking along, you know, keep, keep on living and keep on going. Uh, most of my artwork that I do now, it, a lot of it has a message or a story behind it that I want to tell people. Like, I'd much rather tell a story about a local guy that lives in my neighborhood who is struggling through homelessness, that has, like, an ex-girlfriend and, like, three kids that they no longer get to see that live in California, but they're in Austin. And 
they got here by hitchhiking back in like the 90s. I mean, like all these stories that go untold that are so civilian and so original are so much more like meaningful to me. Um, and then recently, my, my sister passed away, actually, uh, less than a year ago. So she's influenced me in the way of just, um, um, no, it's all right. She's, uh, so her passing has pushed me to just, just go for it. Um, To, to just really, you know, really pursue my art career because it's, it's what brings me the most joy. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it also made me realize how anything can happen at any moment. So you got to just live your life and just go for it because really at the end, when you die, it doesn't matter what, you know, it doesn't matter if, if you had a successful career in banking or something random like that or you know, there's all these things that just don't matter what matters is did you did you enjoy your life did you follow your dreams <clears throat> so she's influenced me and, and really a lot of people in my family to just stop doing what's not important and focus on what's important which is do what you love and be with the people that you love so